As a leader, you mostly want a predictable operation that guarantees that customers get what they want, when they want it, and at the right price. A predictable operation is good for the people and the shareholders. You seek order. Some organizations achieve just that, a fine-tuned operation, so tuned that it becomes a sleeping beauty. Passion is dead, management doesn't take any risk, process improvement and product innovation are minuscule, boring. The world around us is a tragic whirlwind. What makes your management team think that your operation is immune to it? You need to inject some chaos in the works, lest your business will stop improving and growing, or even die a sudden death because it has become incapable to adapt to a brutal world. Hello, this is Pierre Bienvenue from MP. We are here to help remove anxiety from leadership as they gain greater clarity and control. Within Walking Distance is a series giving tips, tools and reflections for leadership. If you are new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the links relevant to this video that you will find in the description box below. MP. So let's answer the question. Why do you need chaos when your organization is losing momentum? To begin, order is a must to run a profitable business. Order is necessary to ensure stability and predictability in business operations. It ensures that processes are operated consistently and according to standards. Predictable process outcomes help companies achieve their goals. However, an over-reliance on order can stifle creativity and innovation. It can create a rigid, inflexible work environment where leaders discourage experimentation and risk-taking. In this context, there is no room for exploration, which is an essential part of scientific thinking and continuous improvement. The organization is already stuck in the past. On the other hand, chaos can foster creativity and drive innovation. It encourages employees to think outside the box and challenge the status quo. New ideas bubble up, solutions and products are created that will take your company to the next level. The organization creates a sustainable future. We also know that too much chaos causes confusion, unpredictability and a lack of control. Symptoms are inefficiencies, delays, and mistakes. This can harm the business's reputation and bottom line. And we don't want that. You want to release chaos in an orderly manner. Let me draw a picture for you. Earlier this century, when I had just contracted the lean virus, I was haggling all the time with a colleague, the ops director, on the necessity for improving the processes when he was arguing that we had to go back to basics, bring back discipline. By the way, my ex-colleague Dieter is from German descent. And we were both right to some extent. It seemed to me that there was a management continuum linking the disciplinarians to the led by libertarians. The needle will tilt to one side or the other based on the financial results. Then I read Jeffrey Liker's Toyota Way. He makes reference to a paper by Paul Adler. That's when I started to understand that we needed both discipline, extensive rules and structure on one hand, so that we can enable the release of the creativity required to improve people, product, and processes on the other hand. In short, one can only improve a system if there is a benchmark created by the standardized work. Humorously, you can only break the rules if you know the rules. 
Dr. Adler shows how to distinguish organizations across two dimensions, the technical structure of rules, procedures, and controls, and the social st structure, which is either cohesive or enabling. I'll illustrate the four organizational types with these stereotypes. The autocratic type, that's dictatorship under Idi Amin. You carry favor with the boss, but since there are hardly any rules and that he has several psychological impairments, you eventually end up bullied, banished, or beheaded. The coercive bureaucracy, traditional armed forces, you're not here to think, but you follow procedures and orders. You're a dumb machine. We see the effect on the battlefield. The organic type, young professionals starting up a venture to develop the next mousetrap app in crypto, enthusiastic, self-driven, scattered and ill-disciplined. You're cool though. At last, the enabling bureaucracy, leaders who make their people successful, disciplined and empowered employees. They are continually improving processes and of course, delighted customers. You can't wait for Monday mornings. That's what world-class organizations have achieved and are sustaining. The arch model is Toyota. Few companies are like them. They are balancing order and chaos. Some would say the yin and the yang. How do they do it? Some key points. Think long term raise the bar and challenge leaders and develop a culture of continuous improvement where chaos is released in an orderly manner. This is built into the framework of continuous improvement. That is the plan, do, check and adjust cycle. If you are familiar with it, have you considered it this way? The manager is the coach of their subordinates. Everyone understands the long-term goals of the organization. Coaches establish medium-term improvement challenges at the lowest possible level of the organization. Coaches set themselves short-term improvement goals. Coaches set themselves experiments to understand the obstacles and overcome them. That's the scientific thinking. Coaches establish boundaries in the experiments to reduce risk and the cost of experimenting. For example, they make sure that the experiments are safe for the customer, their people, and they are not breaking the bank. That's putting a limit to unleashing chaos. And then they standardize to stabilize. When people become used to tackle head-on unusual obstacles, they naturally become creative again. So let's wrap up. Some organizations become so rigid that they lose their ability to take risks and evolve. They take an even greater risk to become irrelevant. They need to develop a culture of continuous improvement. The PDA cycle and scientific thinking method provide organizations with a structured yet creative approach to problem solving and decision making. They help them achieve a balance between order and chaos. Leadership can develop or regain an appetite for risk and improvement. They drive sustainable growth and success. Your business is unstuck thanks to chaos. And this is the good quote for this episode. Warren Bennis wrote, An organization, no matter how well designed, is only as good as the people who live and work in it. To be truly effective, it must unleash the talents and energies of its people. Isn't this beautiful? You may have a need to improve on your leadership skills, turn them into good habits, or you need support to transform your organization. Maybe you need to introduce a little chaos. I can help you. 
If you would like to meet with me for a free hour of leadership coaching, send me an email at wwd at impi.solutions. I will gladly start a conversation with the first three viewers who contact me. Feel free to connect. I'll be posting the next episode in two weeks. In the meantime, raise the bar and challenge your leadership.